cryptocurrencies, cannabis stocks, and CEO interviews brought to you by Rich TV Live. Hi, how's everyone doing today? This is Rich from Rich TV Live, and I'm here with a very special guest, the CEO of HPQ Silicone Resources, Inc., Bernard Turion. How are you doing today, Bernard? Very good, very good. Happy to be here. Happy to have you here. I'm excited to talk about your company and introduce your company to our growing membership of investors all over the world. So why don't we just get started by you telling us a little bit about HPQ Silicone Resources, Inc., Okay, HPQ is a company that's developing a new process to make silicone metal. That sounds boring and everything else, but silicone is a massive market, $24 billion a year, and we're reinventing the way of doing it much more efficiently and changing completely the dynamics of it. The beauty of silicone, it's used in anything that's renewable, green tech, um, strategic minerals, and everything else. Fantastic. And what markets is HPQ Silicone focused on? And what problem is HPQ helping to solve? Okay. Um, silicone is one, as I said, silicone is SI. Just my only technical part here will be this. It's a material um, that is used in many of the new products coming in from solar energy. It's the key to solar energy. You need it to turn the energy of the sun into electricity. Um, you need it to make in uh, electronic, in EV, in electrical vehicles. It makes the vehicle lighter. Um, there's new now usage coming into the battery space, which is being used to replace graphite into it because it's a much more efficient material. Um, so, but it's, it, it's a very big market. And what's been happening is it was originally really an industrial material used to strengthen aluminum and everything else. So it, there was a, a market for it, and there was specialty niche market that required higher purity, for, higher purity of that material for electronic chips. So this is why it's called Silicon Valley is because they use silicone chips into everything that is in your telephone and everything else. It starts with the silicone that we're going to be producing. It's either purified and everything else. But what's been happening in industries as it moves into um, the more the renewable, the more uh, high efficiency material, there's now a need for a raw material, a silicone raw material that's of a purity of two ends and higher up. Like for solar, you need six N, for electronic, you need nine N. It's not that important to discuss. But what happens is making two ends for the traditional process is very, very difficult because it's a very heavy industrial carbothermic process what that means is you need quartz, you need carbon, you need a lot of heat to do it. And the only way they do it is you need very, very pure material to make less pure material. And then you need to take that material and purify it for end usage. What we're doing is we're sort of cutting the middle step into it. We can go with very unpure material, make very, very pure material compared to our competitors and pretty close to almost solar quality going down the line, cheaper not very complicated and the market's already there. It's, you know, it's, it's a massive market. We can do it cheaper. And that's fundamentally what we're doing. Silicone. Um, it's, it's funny. People don't realize how much they use silicone and everything in their life. Um, Gorilla glue. You see that ad it's silicone base, uh, silicone caulking. It's silicone comes out of that material. Oh yeah. So it goes from silicone caulking to chips in your computer on your cell phone. It's used in everything, and yet it's unknown. Why? Because it's, it's one of those, it was one of those completely unsexy advanced material. Wow. Well, I mean, if it's being used in so many different products, it's sexy to me. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what was the main factor that helped HPQ reach a high of 30 cents back in 2016? Okay, that's when we started to move with pyrogenesis on developing the technology, which we call the PureVap process. Okay, well, the PureVap process, um, I, what the PureVap process allows us to do is eliminate multiple steps to try to go to solar. Okay, so when you do any type of things at lab scale, all right, which was the result we were getting up to 30 cents, it's very easy to do to get very sexy results. Basically, at lab scale, you can almost create anything. All right, the problem goes when you want to go from lab scale 
commercial scale. Now that's been something that with our, my partnership with Pyrogenesis, um, we've, it's always been our focus on understanding. So we went to 30 cents because the lab scale looked very, very promising. And when you get the first results, it looks out of the, out of the sky. Um, but what happens is when you, when you then go from lab scale to commercial scale, which is an important phase for everything else, um, you know, as I said, there's, there's a phase of it that looks about as exciting looking as paint dry. And that's, that's literally what happened is we got so good results from the get go that we immediately decided to go validate the commercial scalability. So we went from a, a lab scale machine which is nothing else than something that fits on top of a, uh, on top of a desk and demonstrate you could, we could do it, which already was very rare that we could, that we could do silicone and build it. So since that initial peak of 30 cents, why has HPQ been so quiet? Uh, twofold, I would say. One of them is sort of a semi-deliberate strategy in the sense there was some events that, that made it happen. And then, um, once I closed the government financing at a significant premium and I saw that it wasn't getting any traction with, with investors, that wasn't the key catalyst for investors to come back in the story, but mostly when's the pilot plan going to be ready? Um, I decided not to waste money doing marketing. I decided to well, just, just focus on getting the project advancing, moving forward. Okay. I'll have plenty of time to talk about how great it is. And what we did, we issued great update because we were, we have been getting fantastic results, but they're mostly been, how can I say this very engineering thinking and everything else. So that's not the most sexy thing, but it's the most important. It's like we're building the foundation to a mansion. Okay. There's a part of it that doesn't really look sexy and everything else. That's what we've been doing. Um, so that's really fundamentally what happened. At one point, I just didn't want to be like one of those, you know, trying to come up with a press release just to come up with press release to say, you know, I've moved three bolts from here to four bolts from there. It's not worth it. Um, so we focus much more on market research, um, making sure that all our working hypotheses were coming true seeing how the market was evolving because when we started in the solar business, um, just to give you an idea, uh, solar grade silicon metal was selling at $25 a kilogram, $25,000 a ton. Now it's selling below eight. Wow. That changes, that changes the dynamics of the market. Of course. Uh, it doesn't affect us in the sense of our business plan. It actually plays into our strength coming in, but those are the reality of it. And there's been um, things that we're not, as prominent in the market two years ago, which are now becoming much more prominent now. Uh, one of the things I've basically just discovered or been, be, been made more aware is that the market demand for the material, specific purity of the material, um, has gone through the roof. And it's a material that my competitors, the big boys in the industry, have a very, very hard time to do. Okay. And for us, in our all R&D research, we made, without really working very hard at it. And that's what made us realize is, wait a minute, we're competitive at every level and we demolish the barriers to entry. So no, that's that. great. Bernard, I love what I'm hearing. Let me ask you another question. Mm -hmm. Can you please elaborate on the building of a commercial plant mm -hmm. versus a conventional plant producing silicone metal and what that does for the company now as of July 11th? Okay. Traditional smelter. Okay. It's a real smelter. So think about all the specific levels of it from social acceptability to one usage, and everything else. Okay. So traditional process, you'll need, if you're a senior producer, you'll need an investment of about $220 million to build a 30,000 ton per year capacity. That's what the industry has sort of figured out. That's the minimum cost to get the best, you know, CapEx cost and operating costs. Uh, between 220 million, if you're doing it, 300 million, if you're offsourcing it, that's the minimum. That's the barrier to entry to enter the silicone business. Okay. Wow. We can do this at from about 5,000 ton a year capacity. Okay. We match the lowest cost producer in the capex when you use a um, cap cost per kilogram of annual capacity. We're at the same price. We have an operating cost that we know is going to be 20 to 30 percent cheaper than the cheapest one because they need 6.2 tons about of raw material to make one ton. We need 
Right. They need ultra pure material. We need cheaper. Now the difference is ultra pure is expensive. Cheaper is <laughs> basically less pure is cheaper. You know, um, and a funny thing, we used to be a, a quartz mining company, a resource company. What we discovered to make silicone metal, although silicone metal is made out of quartz, the key ingredient is the carbon. Okay. One of my competitors actually controls one of the two mines in the world that does the carbon that any smelter commercial plant can use. Okay. We can use plain Jane standard clean coal that comes out of any plant in Virginia or anywhere else. That gives us an incredible advantage because they used to be able to control the market. So basically your competitor control your cost of raw ingredient. I'm not affected by it. You know, you speaking of that, can you actually touch on a few months ago, you announced a deal with Pyrogenesis Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, the guys, the symbol for Pyrogenesis is PYR. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that was, I think it started on June 4th, the construction required for the HPQ dedicated section of the facility. Yeah, that, that yes, but that started in 2015. We've been partnering with Pyrogenesis in 2015. One of the other things I've done, okay, as a company, HP, HPQ, one of our philosophy was, um, I am not going to start from scratch and build my own technical team because then that means my investors are paying, playing for experience. Uh, we decided to outsource, and it's, but we did better than outsource. We partnered with Pyrogenesis. And uh, Pyrogenesis is one of those technical geniuses, brainiac cor corporations that do things um, that nobody else does. They've done things for the U.S. Navy. They've done things for the Department of Defense. They're doing something that's – they invented – um, plasma atomization for 3D printer before it even was even thought of by people. Wow. Uh, they've re-entered that space. They partnered up with a billion dollar European company in, the, in that process. Wow. Uh, they've developed a, a technology to um, recuperate much more efficiently and in, in, in economically drowsed from aluminum. Um, so that's their expertise. And by outsourcing with them, I have a team of like, I was once in a car, I think I have already quoted this one, but I was one in a car uh, with two PhD, one, one Emmy in engineer, and the only dumb, dumb MBA. Of course, I was the one driving everybody to the meeting, but that's, that's literally what it is. So it's impossible. It would be impossible for a company like HPQ to build that. Okay. So that's the team we have. We are sort of part because, because Pyrogenesis and our, our larger shareholders are just below the 10% threshold, 9.71% uh, on a fully diluted 12%, 13%. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a mutually designed, but as the CEO of Pyro has often stated, um, one of his biggest assets is his brain, the brain capacity, and he wouldn't be wasting it if he didn't see the potential in the project that we see. Great. And I love we it. We both realized we're, we're the only player, like in silicone, okay, we're the only junior in the field. You'll get people saying, I have a quartz deposit there for him in silicone, but Sorry to tell you, I, I get off records deposit like left, right, and center every three days. Can you ask, actually, you, you, you touched on this a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit about your team and how they strengthen HPQ Silicon Resources, Inc.? Um, yeah, my, my team, it's, it, it's a very small team. It's a very lean team, okay? It's HPQ really outsourced the R&D with Pyro. Uh, I am the point of focus. Eventually, we will shrink in our point more and more with salesmen and everything else. We'll have our own technical people. But right now, by outsourcing it, I've been able to have a team that I could never afford. Okay, I could, I could never afford the expertise, everything else. You got to remember the pyrogenesis from the get-go. They don't look at a project if it can't be commercially scalable. Okay, and remember, lab scale, you can do anything. Okay. Um, and that's really where it's playing to our advantage. So that's really where it is. We haven't built a big team. We don't spend that much money on doing these type of things. We're more focused on, <laughs> getting, you know, it's like, a, I'm, I'm a big share. We, our investors do not like companies that have a high burn rate. We do not like companies that are spending money like a drunken sailor. Uh, we don't, we're not into that. We're into companies that have a very strong balance sheet, strong team, and companies that are underappreciated, undervalued, and underexposed. Now, That's about us. <laughs> on that, and, and this is why we think that you guys have that potential to be one of those companies. Mm -hmm. And uh, at only nine cents right now, this is you know, an unbelievable opportunity for investors. So 
who would you say are some of your main competitors, if there's any, and how do okay. you stand out? How do you stand out amongst the pack? Uh, I would say that there's two peer competitors in the sense that there's the big boys, the big players, but they're all billion dollar companies. Okay, uh, Ferro Globe. Uh, there's a Brazilian company. There's uh, <coughs> Elkim, and, and those are the big boys. So these are the guys that are sort of looking at what I'm doing. Um, and gonna, they're going to wait for me either to succeed. Well, I know I'm going to succeed. And then they're going to, then they're going to start shaking their boot. Um, and there, but there's no small player. My competitors are any company that says it in tech, in graphite, in, in anything else, but no, nobody is in my field of silicon because silicon carbothermic process that we're developing is very unique, very specialized. We will have in pyrogenesis this facility a 3,000 square foot piece of equipment that can produce 50 tons of high purity silicone metal um, on a regular basis. They'll be there to, to, to send samples to clients, get the process demonstrated, plus get, get us to get all the financial numbers finalized. We know internally that it looks very promising financially. Um, we know that we can attack niche market that nobody else can. Um, see, the problem of a billion-dollar company is that a high-value niche market doesn't move the needle for a billion-dollar company. It moves the needle for us. I've actually seen a billion-dollar company try to sell to investors that, you know, they're going to attack this 3,500-ton-a-year market, sub-market of the silicone place because they can get, you know, six to $10,000 a kilogram, yeah, $10,000 a ton uh, of material for that specific branch. That's nice, but it doesn't really change the needle. For us, it changed the needle because we, we're the lowest cost producer. We have very low capex, and we can build specific uh, material for them. So we have that flexibility. That's great. Now, we here at Rich TV Live, we are all about finding undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed companies. You're at nine cents. Seems like you're extremely undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed. So if there's one thing you want the investors to know about HPQ Silicone Resources Inc. What would it be? It's um, it, it's it. I have so many things coming through my head, so it's difficult to say one thing. But if you think about it, investors are coming in right now. Okay, um, are getting the benefit of four years of R and D, and we're entering. We're we're about to enter the exploding phases. Okay, once we start having the pilot plan, that's when it's going to be exploding. I think the reason why we're in this price range right now is people says, when is that exactly going to happen? I don't know. But it's, I know it's close. I know it's there. It's not years away. It's, not, it's a few months away and everything else. And that's going to completely be game changing. We know that we have a lot of eyes on what we're doing. Okay. Um, and we're not that worried about the technology moving forward because the market sort of fall into a position. So investors are coming in now, get the benefit of... The, the three, four, five years of work, um, they get into a price above, uh, no, sorry, below where strategic investors come in. Remember, Pyrogenesis, the Quebec government, agreed to finance, do the last phase of financing of the pilot plant at 12 cents when we were trading 8 cents and we went down to 5 cents and a half. That's basically a 100% premium. Wow. At some point, there's something that doesn't work. It's just, I, my honest belief is that too many investors think they have time to come back in. That's, that's, that's all what it is. They're in no rush. They're in no rush. So they're going to no. go find, they're going to put their money somewhere else to make some quick money and they'll come back to this when this starts to make a move. Well, hopefully yeah. you guys start making a move soon and everybody starts flooding back in. I mean, we have seen the stock trade millions of shares. So it'd be nice to see it start trading like that again and turn into a day trader's paradise. I know that's what we love to find here at Rich TV. Well, that might be your part, day trader paradise. I'm, I'm, in, I'm in this to build something because I know that we have something unique. The fun part is I'm literally the only player in this, in, in this space. I'm the only junior one in this space. Um, and if you compare the size of my space, okay, the, it's a $24 billion addressable market. Well, I think you can put all lithium graphite markets combined. It's bigger than that. Wow. And <laughs> that's it. Bernard, with the way things are going, it looks like you guys are on the verge of having a huge 2019. Can you tell us what's coming up for the rest of this year? 
Uh, well, I, I think we're going to have a, it, I think 2019 is going to be the start of a huge 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. If you want to, if you want to know from, from, from my, my perspective. Yes, please. 2019 is going to be the start of the pilot plan. Um, and we are going to be starting to look at markets that we can immediately uh, engage with our pilot plant equipment. Um, and take a look, uh, get that moving and moving that forward. And that's literally what, what we're doing, what we're working on. Okay, great. And what is the best way for shareholders to get in contact with the company if they're interested in investing or learning more, or if there's a company out there that wants to do a joint venture or a letter of intent with you guys, how would they get in contact with you? Well, it's not very difficult. Through our website, they send me an email. On a press release, you got my phone numbers. Uh, not usually that difficult to reach if you want to reach me. Um, you know, we, we do have a, a, a controlled discussion forum on Agoracom. If you ask a question there, um, I will go answer it within the limit of what I'm allowed to say by the regulation. Um, you know, it's a we're pretty open to talking to people. So it doesn't really, but you, but you won't get any corporate secret from us. <laughs> is, there, is there a way for them to get in contact with you through your website or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, you, if you go on the website and you ask um, inquiry, it'll get, it goes into my, indirectly in my email. Um, on my, uh, if you could take a look uh, on a press release, there's, there's, there should be the, um, the info at HPQ. It, it reaches either me or Patrick. So cool. Okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time today. We wish you all the best of luck on your success. We're going to continue to follow your journey at Rich TV Live. And at this point in time, I want to wish you a great day, Bernard. We'll thank be you. watching very, very closely. And thank you guys for watching all over the world. Go and do your research, do your due diligence. HPQ Silicone Resources, Inc. Have a nice day, Bernard. You too.